Hey there guys, John here, and this is my quick review of the new Eli Roth produced film, The Last Exorcism. Now, The Last Exorcism is about this uh, middle-aged preacher named Cotton. And what you learn about this guy very early on is that he's had a crisis of faith a few years previous, and he no longer believes in exorcism. But he's pretty well known for performing exorcisms, and now has set out to disprove or debunk the myth of exorcisms. And in helping him do that, he has a documentary crew that's making a film about him. And he decides that he's going to perform one last exorcism. He's going to pick a random letter that gets sent to him requesting an exorcism, and then he's going to have the documentary crew follow him along as he performs this fake exorcism to convince people they're no longer possessed by demons. Now first let me talk about this whole controversy about the fact that it's an Eli Roth produced film. Remember he didn't direct it, he produced it. That isn't rated R. This is a PG-13 film. And some people online have been complaining and whining about the fact that, oh, he must have sold out to make it PG-13. But that's not the case at all. I was talking to Eli Roth, and the fact of the matter is, and the director, they just made the movie the way they wanted to make it. And then they sent it to the ratings board. As a matter of fact, they expected the MPAA to give it an R, but it came back with a PG-13. Great. They didn't want to go out of their way to make it an R-rated film because they believe that's not being true to themselves as filmmakers, and I respect that. Now, getting on to the main thing of any kind of a horror film, the main thing, of course, is scares. Does the film creep you out? And I'm going to say this about The Last Exorcism. It does a pretty good job of creeping you out. As a matter of fact, you know, the first half hour is a bit slow, but I like the way they use that first half hour. It really established this character, Cotton, very, very well. It established all the players very, very well. And it seemed to me like once you got into the parts that got legitimately creepy... If we didn't really know the story of the father, if we really didn't know anything more about the character of Nell or her brother or Cotton, the fake exorcist, I got a feeling that the parts that worked wouldn't have worked as well. I think it's specifically because we got to know some of these mannerisms and the, the personality types of all these characters first and got them well established that the creepiness stuff became effective. Once Nell turns it on and becomes creepy, the film legitimately becomes creepy. I mean, I was in—I've seen the film twice already, and in both times there were theaters in the theaters that there were people just kind of curled up in their chairs, kind of spooked about what was going on. There was some excellent cinematography, the way they use their shots, the way they use lighting. It should be noted here that there are no special effects in the movie. As a matter of fact, there's not even any makeup in the movie, except for you know when somebody gets cut. They obviously don't really cut one of their actors, but there's no makeup in the film. When you see people sweating, that's really them sweating, and here. Here's the coolest part. The girl, Nell, who is supposedly possessed, when you see her body contorting, like in the trailers, you see her body bent over backwards and her neck snapping like that, that's not special effects. That's actually her doing it. And I didn't know about that until after I saw the movie for the first time. Then when I watched it again, that it especially freaks me out. Apparently she's like double jointed everywhere. And she came up with all this stuff on her own. And the director looked at it and said, yeah, let's do that. And uh, all that stuff she does, she does completely on her own. Now, while I say that the film becomes legitimately creepy, I, I mean it. It really does. But I felt like this film could have been something more than just creepy. They went through a lot to establish this character Cotton as a, as a preacher with a crisis of faith. And now he's coming face to face with something he's never really encountered before. And they hit a point in the movie. And if you've seen the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's the barn scene, okay? They hit this point in the movie where I felt that could have been a really pivotal point where they could have turned the film in a very, very interesting direction. And instead, they kind of went off in another route that... I'll admit, left me a little bit dissatisfied. I wasn't thrilled with the ending of this film. I really felt like the second act was the strongest part of this movie. The first act was slow, but I think necessary, so I give a thumbs up to the first act. The second act, I thought was really creepy, but the third act, I felt like was a bit of a wasted opportunity, and it disappointed me, left me a little bit dissatisfied. Still, overall, The Last Exorcism is a very quietly creepy film that I think accomplishes what it sets out to do, I just feel like, especially in the third act, they could have done a lot more. Out of 10, I'm going to give Last Exorcism a 7. For JohnCampia.net, I'm John Campia.